I'm Natalie Rogers with Tat Your Own Adventure. I am going to be walking through the vapor stitch today. I'm going to show you how to add it to a chain and how to add it to a ring. And then we'll do a small little pattern for you to practice the vapor stitch. Um, the vapor stitch is by Nanetta Caruso. It's a technique um, she has done a diagram for. So I will link in the um, description um, a link to her diagram. Okay, uh, so I am just using some practice thread that I've already started. So it's got a small little uneven split ring and a chain. And from here is where I'm gonna, I've decided I've got five stitches, I'm gonna add in a vapor stitch. Um, so the way vapor stitches are noted in the patterns is a capital V with a subscript of a number, and that number tells us the twist. So I'm gonna show you the twist method first um, for a chain, okay? So you want quite a bit of um, thread in your hold because what you're gonna take is you're gonna take it off of your tensioning finger. So whether you tension this way or tension with the crocheter's hold, you take it off of your finger. You're gonna twist it the number of times it says. We're gonna start with a four um, because you are just learning this process. So we are going to grab it and twist one, two, three, four times, okay? Then you're gonna hold that twist because you wanna take your shuttle and put it through that loop. Okay, so we have four twists on our thread. We're going through the loop we just made with our shuttle. Okay, and then we're gonna pull this up to the last stitch, and we're also gonna kinda tug this so that it's straight up. If you look right now, we've got it twisting around the thread. As I pull down gently on this, it's gonna start to spiral closed, and it's actually gonna end up putting a barrel knot um, onto our thread. So if you look, it's spiraling, it's spiraling, and there we go, we've got our little, oops, hang on. Uh, I just realized I had slid past the um, last stitch, and so it's spiraling on top of other stitches. So let me slide this a little bit forward here. So they can be unpicked. It's a little bit trickier to unpick a barrel stitch, but it, it is possible. So, so don't stress if it doesn't seem to like it. So take a look here. I'm going to bring it in close, get it in focus. There we go. You can see that there's this little barrel that's now sitting right next to the last stitch. Okay, that's the first half of the vapor stitch. The second half is just the normal second half of the stitch. It folds it over. So vapor stitches can make nice little corner peaks, um, turns. Uh, the more twists you add, the sharper your turn can be. This was just a four. Um, we're gonna put five stitches next to it so you can kind of see what it's doing. One, two, three, four, five. So you can see when I tension that how it kind of makes a bit of a point. It pops up a little bit. It's taller than the other stitches around it. Okay, so we're going to do another vapor stitch so we can practice that method. We're using the twist method currently. Um, there's a second method that I'll show you, um, but m most of the people I have taught this technique to find the twist method to be the preferred method, so that's why I'm teaching that one first. So, again, we're going to grab the thread that's in our hold. We're going to twist it one, two, three, four times. We're then going to hold that so we can get our shuttle through it. Okay, and then we bring that straight up. Sometimes you're gonna have to come here and tug this so that it's straight up there and then slowly bring it down. You don't wanna go too fast because then you can end up with lumps in your barrel. So you wanna just slowly slide that thread down. And if you're not liking how it's coming down, you can always smooth it back up and then tug it down some more so that you get a nice smooth barrel shape. If it gets stuck, you just have to kind of wiggle it a little bit. 
and it'll come right down and there you go we've got a nice little barrel there and we'll bring it fold it over to its neighbor so that curves it there and we'll do five more stitches one two three four five Okay, so you can see how that kind of turned it again. So this is a great way to shape your pieces. Um, I really enjoy using um, vapor stitches for corner edges. If you take a look at my Christmas tree earrings, their tree trunk, that's a ring that has a flat edge to it because it has a vapor stitch in each corner. So I really enjoy using vapor stitches. Um, they show up in quite a few of my patterns because I enjoy that sharp um, corner that they can give. Okay, I'm gonna switch the thread that I have on and we're gonna do some more practice. These are gonna be sixes instead of fours. So I'm gonna use the twist method. So I'm gonna grab it from my pinch here make this just a little bit bigger because we're going to do a six instead of a four. So two more twists. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Again, hold that so I can come up with my other shuttle. Oh, and that time I kind of twisted. So I just need to untwist so that my purple thread is straight. Slide it up to the last stitch. And you see how it's kind of bunched up here? So it bunched up on me, so what I need to do is just, wherever the top is, tug that until it's even. And then I can slowly start spiraling it down. As you get practice with this, you can go a little bit faster. I'm going to keep going slow so you can see what's happening. And then I'm pulling it back up. As I did that, I pinched the bottom so it couldn't unflip on me. And then I'm slowly going to spiral it down some more. You can see how that nice barrel knot is forming. This is definitely a taller barrel than our last one because we have six stitches now instead of four. So it makes for a higher barrel. And when you're happy with the shape, you can then do that second half and fold it over. And we're going to do five more stitches. Sorry, my purple thread got quite long. One, two, three, four. So you can see how that makes even an even sharper turn than the fours did. The fours was um, a very obtuse angle, a very wide angle, um, where this is almost a 90 turn um, from the previous section. It also helps that we switch colors, so that um, makes it a little bit more distinct. But let's do one more um, twist with a six before we go try twisting with eight. Okay, so again large amount on my hand so that I have enough space to do six twists. One, two, three, four, five, six. Notice that I'm twisting towards the back of the thread. That's intentional. If I twist it up to the front, I'm not going to have enough space to make it stand up straight when we go to do it. So let me show you that really quick. If I twist from the front, one, two, three, four, five, six, I then go through with this. And this part is now taller than the other and it's going to get tangled up and that's going to be a lot harder to get, um, to get to barrel nicely. So instead of twisting from the front of my hold, I'm always going to twist near the back of my hold because that'll give me enough working space to properly do the barrel. Okay, so we're going to do six again. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six spins. Hold my little loop my finger was in open. Bring my shuttle through that loop. 
untwist the purple that just wrapped around it. There we go. Slide it down. The first several times you try this, it's going to be really clumsy, and that's okay. It's practice. I've done this a lot. Um, it takes a lot of practice um, to make it smooth and... Um, but once you've, once you've got it down, it's an, it's a really awesome technique. I really like it. Um, yeah. Here we go. So we're going to slowly tug on that. So it can start spiraling down, tug this back up to help it stay even. Spiral it down, tug it back up, spiral it down, tug it back up a little bit more. Okay. I need a little bit better attention, so I'm going to pull that in a little. There we go. Okay. There we go. We got a nice little barrel there. Okay. It's our barrel of six. Second half of the stitch to curve it over. And five stitches. One. Two. And I'm dropping shuttles. And they're twisting. Because I'm further from the desk. I stood up for this part. Three. Four. Five. Tighten. So you can see how that turns it a lot sharper than the fours did. Okay, so fours give you a slight turn, um, sixes give you even more of a turn, and I'm going to switch back to the purple, and we're going to do some eights. You can do as few or as many twists as you would like. Um, fewer means shorter barrel, uh, more twists means a taller barrel. Um, the higher up you get, the tougher it is going to be to wrangle it, uh, but it's totally doable. Um, vapor stitch eights, the eights are typically the, are typically the largest, um, count of twists I've used in my patterns because it gives a very nice crisp corner for me. So I'm going to show you a V8. Um, with the twist method, so grabbing from the back. Um, actually, I want just a tiny bit more. There we go, thread space. About as wide as my hand can can hold it, and then loosen to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Try not to lose my pinch, but grabbing that loop so that I can stick the shuttle up through it. Okay, then sliding my the purple over to the last stitch. Okay, so as you can see here, it's up here, but I've got this big gappy bit down at the bottom. I definitely don't want that as I'm tightening, so I want to take, again, from the top, pull that up so that loops up at the top. And you always want your thread that you're tensioning to be longer than the loops that you're trying to cinch down. So we lucked out just barely um, in that this is slightly longer than my twisted loop. So that helps when tensioning. Um, I just tugged it quite a bit. I'm gonna tug it back up because it's really tightening down the bottom ones and it's gonna need to tighten some more before it finishes. Okay, starting to spiral. Pull it back up to kind of make it all even. Sometimes I massage it from the bottom up to move the barrel that was starting to form back up to stretched out so that it will go evenly. And then you tension. Okay. And you keep tensioning until you're happy with your little barrel. Here we go. As you can see, That made for a very tall barrel. That is the eight. And I can do the 
the second half of the ring, which pulls it over. It almost curves entirely around on itself. Reminds me a bit of a snail, sh snail shell. Um, let's do five stitches after it. One. Two. stitch eight to give you practice with it. So we're going to do another eight twists. Please, please know that if it's being tricky for you, master the four first. Practice as many times as you need to to master the four. Then move on to the six. If the six is too rough, try a five. Then once you've mastered the six, move on to the eight. If the eight is too rough, try a seven. Build up the skill to get to where you need to be. So you do not have to master it on the first go, the second go, the 300th go. The main thing is that you just keep going until you do master it. It's a very fun technique to use. Okay, so again, we're grabbing from the back side. We're gonna twist eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm literally just spinning my finger in a circle to do those twists. Grabbing that loop, putting my shuttle through that loop walking it up to my last stitch and then adjusting this so that it is up there you don't always have to use the shuttle you can use your fingers tightening it down a little bit so that I can get it over my finger here and I've got a little bit of a mess down here so all I have to do is loosen my tension a little bit and go up and grab that top guy and help it stretch. Okay, and again, massage it from the bottom up when it's barreling before you want it to barrel. And then slide her down. Okay. That gives us a nice barrel. Last part is to curve our barrel over. And then we'll do five more stitches so you can see that vapor stitch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So as you can see, it can make for very sharp turns. Now we've now got an acute angle there, less than 90 degrees. So it can be used for all sorts of design elements. Okay, so that is the vapor stitch with the twist method on chains. So we walked through the four size, the six twist size, and the eight twist size. Um, Make sure you practice with those until you're comfortable, and then you can try what I'm going to show you next, which is a vapor stitch in a ring. I do recommend that you're comfortable with it first, um, because the when you're using two colors, it's really nice to see. You can see if you accidentally flip or get tangled. Um, you you can see that you need to you know adjust one color over the other before you cinch it down. Um, so master it on the chain first. Once you're happy with it on the chain, we will try the ring. Okay, so let's check out the ring. I'm gonna use the blue thread here. It's kind of a turquoise blue. Uh, and I'm gonna do five stitches. One, two, three, four, five. 
Let's do a V6 for your first ring one. Okay, if you find the V6 too challenging, you can move down to the V4. If you find the V6 too easy, you can happily move up to the V8. Um, you'll find that you want to use different ones at different times. We're going to use a six for this one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six twists. Take my shuttle, same shuttle color, because we're just doing a ring, up through that. Walk it over to the last stitch. You can see I'm kind of running into the issue where it is taller than the thread that I'm trying to tug on. Um, so you can either see if you can get some of that thread to move for you, which, there we go, I got some of it to move, and then I can come back and straighten it out and make sure it's right next to its neighbor. Okay? So you definitely don't want it longer than, then you just have problems trying to cinch it down. Okay, so then we slide down our barrel. Here we go. Got a barrel of six. Curve it over with the second half of the stitch, and then let's do five more. One, two, three, four. Five. Okay. Gonna do a second vapor stitch of six. One, two, three, four, five, six. In my twist, take my shuttle through my loop where my finger just was. Walk it back over to its neighbor, pull up on the thread, massage the barrel up if it's winding too early for what you would like, pull down that barrel, and fold it over with the second half of the stitch. And five more stitches, and then we will close this ring. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, once that ring is closed, you're then going to tighten it down. And there we go. Kind of makes a cute little bear head with little curled ears and a ring. There you go. That's a ring with two um, V6 vapor stitches in it. Okay. Okay, I'm going to just add five stitches between this and showing you how to do it in a split ring. So practice as much as you need to um, learning it in the ring. Work up to whatever sizes you want to work with. Um, again, v 8 is typically the most I'll work with. You, um, but I have done more than eight. Um, if I recall correctly, I believe the hair on my little um, helper dancer couple um, on the gal, the bun that she has, I think was a 16, so it curled up on itself. Um, so you can definitely do more than eight. Most of the time, um, eight is sufficient for most things. Sometimes four is sufficient, sometimes six is sufficient. So it just depends what look you're going for, um, how much you want it to turn, that type of thing. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, got five between. Let's do a split ring. Yes, you can do vapor stitches on both sides of a split ring. So we will do the side you're familiar with first, um, which is the regular side of the ring, split ring and let's put in five stitches one two three four 
five, and then let's do a V8. You've had some practices with split rings now, so you can always pause and practice some more if you're not quite ready for a V8. Or you can do a V4 or a V6. You don't have to do an eight. I'm going to model an eight, okay? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight twists. Pinch that spot. Slide through. Find the top bit so that you can all work work it even. If it gets stuck, sometimes you just need to give it a little bit bigger tug. Just make sure you don't tug too fast because you don't want to cinch it down if it's not barreling the way that you want it to. If it's not barreling the way you want it to and you're like, oh, this is bad, um, you can totally take it out fairly easily if you just kind of loop through that bottom loop. Um, you might have to tug a bit to figure out which one will slide, but once it slides enough, you can totally take your shuttle. It's almost slid enough. There we go. Shuttle back through. Once you get out of that loop, it'll come undone entirely. So I just undid that. So I'm going to redo that for you. But I did want to show you that it is possible to undo a vapor stitch. You just have to get that loop free. Um, a little bit trickier once it's all cinched down, but it's still doable. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again, I said I was doing an eight, so there's eight twists. Grabbing my shuttle, putting it through that loop my finger was in. Massaging that barrel upwards if it's starting to get too big at the bottom. It's not going down even. And sliding it down. Again, massaging it back upwards if it's not coming down the way I want it. It seems like it's gotten a little bit stuck, so what I want to do is get in here and find that top loop and make sure it's still looped and not wrapped around itself. And then it usually lets me come on down. There we go, I've got that tall eight barrel, and I'm gonna fold it over and do five more stitches. One, two, three, four, five. And we'll do the second half of a split ring. I just double checked to make sure my split ring moves. It's always, always a good habit to do before you get to the second half of the stitch. The second side of the ring. Not the second half of the stitch. We're going to start with the second half of the stitch because now we're on the end flip side. So one, two, I'm just going to repeat the same thing I did on the other side. Three, four, five. Okay. You're probably wondering, um, Twisting the blue is going to make a blue vapor stitch. How is that going to help on this side? We don't want a blue vapor stitch. We want a purple one. So, um, this is going to start to introduce you to the other technique, um, which is wrapping. So you're going to take your shuttle through once and come up, and you see how you're twisted over once? You're then going to take your shuttle and come back around and go through that same loop twice, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And if you notice, that gives us that same process on the second side, on the purple side. Okay, so then you will be tugging it down. Again, use all your techniques. Slide it up if it's bunching. Get your hook in at the top if it's covering itself over like it was there and gently slide it down. You'll probably find that it slides a lot faster on this side because this shuttle um, has a little bit less resistance because it's not also wrapped in your ring. Um, but do make sure that you're 
getting it to look how you want. So massaging it up if you need to before tightening it back down. Mine is stuck somewhere, so I'm going to just fill around with the uh, loops here and double check that my top one is still wrapped and not um, twisted. There we go. Ooh, then that went really quick. So there we go. That was the um, second half of the stitch. So then I'm going to do the first half of the stitch to finish this one off because I'm on, again, the unflip side. And then five more stitches. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, there we go. We now have a vapor stitch on both sides of our ring. So we can totally close up our ring here. Got a split ring with vapor stitches on both sides. V4s, V6s, V8s. We did V6s in this ring, we did V8s in this ring to give you practice. So now you know how to do vapor stitches in chains in rings and in split rings.